This video should provide you with an in-depth exploration of translations. Recall from our studies the first day that a translation is really a rigid motion that takes and slides an object a fixed distance in a given direction. Recall also that a rigid motion is sometimes called an isometry. And what's so special about a rigid motion or an isometry is the figure that we end up at is exactly the same size as the figure that we started with. In other words, the isometry or the rigid motion preserves distance. Now a translation is not only an isometry, but it's also a special kind of isometry called a direct isometry. You can recall also that a direct isometry will preserve not only length, but orientation as well. Under a translation, it's important to notice that all points in a particular figure are going to move exactly the same distance. This is going to be helpful or used to, useful to us in coming lessons when we try to describe what particular transformation a particular object has undergone. Now sometimes for students, the notation is what's the trickiest part about doing these translations. Because for whatever reason, and I'm not sure exactly how come, we have three different rules that we can use to, ex to describe the exact same translation. For instance, we might see a capital T for translation, and then in parentheses, these little numbers that are going to appear to be somewhat like an ordered pair. So an A value and a B value. That is exactly the same as the translation that we can represent by using what I'm going to call the rule. The rule says we can take any ordered pair and add or subtract some A value and add or subtract some B value. And the third way that we have of looking at a translation is to look at what we call component form, which are these funky pointed parentheses. These three notations that you see here in the star all mean exactly the same thing. They all mean that we're going to take a particular point and we're going to move it A units in the X direction and B units in the Y direction. So again, it's important to note that all of these mean the same thing. Each and every one of them says to take a point and move that point A units in the X direction as well as B units in the Y direction. Now recall that the x-axis is actually your horizontal axis. So moving something A units in the x direction will actually have the effect of shifting that object to the left or to the right. Shifting something in the y direction, well your y-axis is your vertical axis, so that has the effect of moving something up or down. But again, it's important to note that every single one of these says move it A units in the X direction, B units in the Y direction. A units in the X direction, followed by B units in the Y direction. And this component form says exactly the same thing. A units in the X direction, followed by B units in the Y direction. So in the example here, they want us to start with the point whose coordinates are 3, negative 1. So that point represents our pre-image, what we're working with before it undergoes any kind of transformations. And in the first example, they've written this rule. They're saying take any point with coordinates x, y, and add 2 to the x value, and subtract 3 from the y value. So in other words, what this is saying to do is it's saying to take any point, move it to the right two units, and shift it because of the negative here, down three units. So as for how you want to proceed, you have a couple different options. You can grab a sheet of graph paper if you want, and if you're a highly visual person, you might find this approach 
uh, most effective. So graph the point 3, negative 1. Take that point, move it to the right 2 and down 3. Figure out where it ends up, and that's the image. Now, if you're more of an algebraic mind, you can take the point with this coordinates 3, negative 1, and you can say, well, moving it to the right 2 is the same exact as adding 2 to the x value. So if I add 2 to 3, I'm going to end up with a new x value of 5. And moving it down 3 has the same effect as subtracting 3 units from its y value. So its starting y value is negative 1. When we subtract 3 units from that, we end up at negative 4. Regardless of the approach that you take, whether you graph the point 3, negative 1, and then move it right 2 and down 3, or if you apply the addition and subtraction method, you'll still end up at the point whose coordinates are 5, negative 4. Now in letter B, the translation is asked slightly differently. But it's really still the same idea. The capital T stands for translation. The negative 1 tells us how many units we're going to move it in the x direction. Due to the fact that this is a negative number, instead of moving it to the right one, we would move to the left one unit. Due to the fact that the y value here is a 0, we're going to move it up or down, not at all. So the y value is going to remain exactly the same. So again, you could take and plot your pre-image, 3, negative 1, and then move it to the left 1, move it up or down 0. I'm going to take more of an algebraic approach and say, well, moving something to the left 1, if we're starting at an x value of 3, moving it to the left 1 is going to have the net effect of subtracting 1 from the x value, which means I'm going to end up with a new x value of 2. And if I'm starting with a y coordinate of negative 1, and I'm not moving it at all, I'm not doing anything to change it, then I'm going to end up with a new y coordinate of negative 1, which is really the same as the old y coordinate. All right, translations using vectors is the next thing that we need to approach. A vector is a quantity that has both length and direction. So I'm, in, I'm going to take a minute to write that down. A quantity with both length and direction. As you might expect or imagine, a vector can be very useful to us in describing a translation. Because a translation takes and slides an object a given length and in some particular direction. So a vector, the notation that we use for a vector, looks similar to the notation that we might use to represent a ray. So the symbol that we're going to use to represent a vector might say something that looks like ray pq, but really means vector pq. A vector has a starting place and an ending place. The initial point is where we're going to start. The terminal point is where we're going to end. So vector pq would have a starting place at point p, in an ending place of point Q, and the direction of the slide would be the direction of the or the distance between points P and Q. Now sometimes we write this vector in what we call component form, and we've already looked at that a little bit, and that's those pointy or jagged looking parentheses, which again says it move it A units in the X direction to the right or left, B units in the Y direction, or up and down. Okay, down at the bottom, they've given us this translation, and they want to know what vector describes the translation that's been seen here. So what we're going to do is we're going to look at A, which represents our starting point, A prime, which is where it ended up after the translation took place, and we're going to see how many units this triangle moved in the x direction, as well as how many units this triangle moved in the y direction. So from A to A prime, it looks like we move four units to the right, 
and 9 units down. So the way we would represent a vector that moves something to the right 4 units and down 9 units would be to use our component form for negative 9. Notice that due to the fact that this is being moved down 9 units, I'm using a negative number. Now if I were to go and count the number of units that B moved in the X direction and in the Y direction, it would end up being 4 units in the X direction, negative 9 units in the Y direction, and likewise the same for C. And if I go to my picture and I draw those vectors in there, something really interesting happens. Notice that each and every one of these points under this translation has moved exactly the same direction and distance. Every single one of those points moved 4 units to the right and 9 units down, which means every single one of those vectors is the same length. Every single one of those vectors is also the same direction, making them all parallel to each other. So again, what's important to notice here is that each and every point in the triangle was translating using exactly the same vector. As always, I want to thank you for the gift of your time and watching the video, but I do want you to take a few minutes and summarize the key ideas and the important takeaways. What do you think is going to be important for you to remember from this video? And then see if you can apply what you've learned to answer the questions on the next page.